Happy Easter, everyone. Today, the church celebrates the second Sunday of Easter. And as I'm sure you all know, but it's important to keep in mind that within the Catholic Church, Easter isn't just a single day. It isn't even just the octave of the great eight days of celebrating the resurrection. It's a whole season, right? Where we have seven weeks, the 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, leading up to the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And during the Easter season, the church alters during, on Sundays the way she selects the readings and which readings she selects. So before we turn to the second reading for the second Sunday of Easter, I just want to make a couple of quick points. The first thing you're going to notice during the Easter season is that the Old Testament reading, the first reading, is going to be replaced by selections from the Acts of the Apostles, the account of the birth of the church and the spread of the gospel. But the second thing that changes, which not everyone catches, is that although during the bulk of the year, um, the second reading is going to be from one of the letters of St. Paul, with the exception of St. James on, a, on one brief occasion during ordinary time, um, during the Easter season, we, we take a break from looking at the letters of Paul, and we read from the letters of two other apostles, Peter and John. So let me give you the church's explanation of this. This is the official explanation of why we do this on the Sundays of Easter. And I want to read to you. This is from the Congregation of Divine Worship and the Sacraments, a document on the order of the lectionary. And it says in paragraph 100 about Sundays and Easter. And I quote, The first reading is from Acts, in a three-year cycle of parallel and progressive selections. Material is presented on the life of the primitive church, its witness and its growth. For the reading from the apostles, 1 Peter is year A, 1 John is year B, Revelation is year C. These are the texts that seem to fit in especially well with the spirit of joyous faith and sure hope proper to this season. End quote. So notice what the church does here is it, it continues to give us apostolic testimony in the second reading. But instead of giving us the letters of Paul, which are the ordinary readings, it gives us the letter of Peter, 1 Peter in particular, in year A, and then 1 John in year B, and then the Revelation, which is also attributed to John, in year C. So for the rest of the Easter season, for the next five Sundays, what the church is going to do is read semi-continuously through the first letter of Peter. Right? So I just want you to keep that in mind as we're journeying through this Easter season. The other thing I would bring up, and this is just my own um, suggestion, but I found it helpful. If you, I think it's fascinating that in the Easter season, the church reads from the letter of Peter and the letter or the Apocalypse of John and the Acts of the Apostles. Because if you look at the Acts of the Apostles, what happens after the resurrection in the early chapters of Acts, the two prominent apostles that are preaching and teaching in Jerusalem are precisely. Peter and John. For the first eight chapters of Acts of the Apostles, Peter is the primary expositor of the gospel, and John is often right there at his side. So in a sense, if this is helpful to you, you could kind of see the Easter season as the time when the church recapitulates in the lectionary the experience of the spread of the gospel in the early church after the resurrection not only by reading the account of how the gospel spread from Acts, but by listening to the apostolic preaching of the two prominent apostles of those first weeks and months after the resurrection, the apostle Peter and John, the son of Zebedee. So let's begin with year A. We're going to hear first from the prince of the apostles, Peter, and from his first letter, the first letter of Peter. 